Okay, so tonight, Be'ezra Hashem, we are going to be continuing our series of Shirim called Entering the Sea of Wisdom, based on the weekly teachings of the Goin and the Tzaddik, Rav Yitzhak Maya Morgenstern Shlita. And what we're going to be focusing on tonight is a Shir that the Rebbe gave last week, I believe it was on Tuesday or Wednesday night, that Baruch Hashem, they have people now typing up the Hasidah Shirim, the Kabbalah Shirim, and that they're being sent out, and not only that, but they're being included in the pamphlet as well. And so what we're going to look at is uh, an akuda that we've spoken about in the past, which is the way that the Rebbe teaches us to handle meichen dekatnas. The Derech Klaal, there's meichen de godless and there's meichen dekatnas. Meichen de godless is a state of connectivity, a state of awareness where things are moving smoothly. And meichen dekatnas is seen as the opposite of that, of falling away from meichen de godless, losing that spiritual consciousness, losing that experiential awareness of godliness. But as the Rebbe has shown over and over, based on the klalim of the Teres Chacham, of Rav Chaim de La Rosa, who teaches us that be'emes ein siluk meichen klal, that in truth there's never a question of a departure of meichen, person never loses their spiritual awareness. What they experience is spiritual awareness in the guise of having lost spiritual awareness. Meaning to say that moichen the katnus is an experience of moichen. It's a full expression of divine awareness within the mind of the individual, but it's chapped and it's grasped and, it, and it's experienced by way of moichen the katnus. So instead of looking at Meichen the Katniss as constricted mindset as the opposite or the absence of Meichen, because Meichen the Godless is what I have to wait for to find Meichen, what the Rebbe teaches us over and over is that Meichen the Katniss is a mode of Meichen, which means that it is a time to connect to God. It just has to be by way of Katniss. This is not the teaching, but one of my favorite teachings, I would say. And one of my favorite stories from the Rebbe is that the Rebbe was with his Rebbe, the Kretschnefer, the previous generation, the Kretschnefer Rebbe, who had a close relationship with the seventh Lubavitch Rebbe of Lubavitch, who taught the Rebbe very much about diving deep, deep into Sefer Atanya over and over again. And that the Rebbe was driving with his Rebbe, the Kretschnefer, Skusia Remelenu. And the Rebbe was talking to the Kretschnefer about Meichen the Katniss, complaining, so to speak, about Meichen the Katniss. And what the Kretschnefer Rebbe responded was, who told you there's such a thing as Meichen the Katniss? Who told you that there's such an existence as something called Meichen the Katniss? Go and learn Chassidus, go and learn Tanya, and you'll find yourself in Meichen the Godless. And although it's not explicit within the story, I was able to ask about the story, not from the Rebbe, but from different Talmidim. And one way to understand this story is that what the Kretschner forever seems to have been saying is that Avada, there's a concept of Meichen the Katniss. It's explicit in the Arizal, it's explicit in all the Svarim. But the question is, who told you that Meichen the Katniss is anything other than Meichen? It's still Meichen. You still have the ability to connect. It's still a Hasaga of Elokus. It's just a Hasaga of Elokus by way of Katniss. It's not a Hasaga of Elokus. It's not a grasp of godliness by way of expansivity. It's a grasp of Akadush Baruch Hu by way of the very concealment of Akadush Baruch Hu. And this is what the Rebbe is going to be talking about. The Rebbe says as follows with regards to the 261st teaching in the Kutimaran that when Rabbeinu teaches us the need to be mitchadesh over and over and over again, one can see that as this perpetual state of starting and failing, starting and failing, and that Rabbi Nachman came along with this amazing, you know, kind of get out of jail free card of saying, no, just start again, as if it's the secondary kind of way of dealing with spiritual failure. What the Rebbe says is that that's not the case. In truth, the hischachas to me, this, the need to perpetually renew oneself is the secret of tshuva and the secret of coming close to God in every second. The Rebbe says as follows, There's a tremendous foundation that we've been come to taught by Rabbeinu, by Rabbi Nachman, with regards to the need to begin again in in any scenario that a person finds themselves in. And even though a person at that point is experiencing life as if they're in a state of ibor, of unconscious, infantile spiritual awareness, where their moichen the godless has completely fallen away, where a person feels no highest, no vitality in the avoida, 
Nevertheless, Sarach Ladas, she is Pesach Amem, Nukuda Asher Derech Sham Haryu, Nekash Mechadosh Bavodos Hashem. Nevertheless, a person has to believe that in that state of Moich and Dekatnus, which is described as the Mem Stuma, where my Moich is Sassim to me, or my mind is closed off to me, I have to believe what the Tzadikim say, that there's a Nukuda Panemius within that Mem, that I could connect to at any given moment to begin again in Avodos Hashem. The Adarabba. And it's the opposite of what I think. It's not just that, oh, as a consolation prize, I can still connect Hashem there. But In truth, by connecting to that dot of connectivity in the spirit of Meich and the Katnus in the moment of concealment, I have the capacity of revealing an even deeper level of Avodah Hashem than I did before. And this is the aspect of the Torah that Rabbeinu teaches us in Reish Ayin Beis in the Torah of Arev, which Rabbi Nachman says is that a person has to see every moment as the starting point of Avodah Hashem, because each moment is its own entirety of all of history, the Ak and the Abiyah and the beginning, the middle and the end, and each moment just provides me with another opportunity to continue again. Through return, which is the renewal of myself at every moment, I have the ability of finding a Kaddish Baruch Hu in that moment, which is the aspect of Vyas HaMashiach. And with regards to the fact that sometimes a person loses their meich and sometimes a person loses absolute connectivity and feels tired and bored and exterminated in the process of their spiritual work, there are secrets inherent in this. But what we have to remember is that every part of it is precisely scheduled by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That it's very possible it's very possible that I'll have a state of meichen the godless when I'm engaged in eating and in work, but my meichen will fall when I'm in davening or when it's Shabbos or when it's Yontif or even if it's Kedushas Keser. It could be that I'll lose my mind at those moments, but find my mind in more difficult moments. But a person cannot become confused or confounded by this. Rather, what a person has to do is connect to the innermost point at that moment, to realize that my Hiskashris in the time of Meich and the Katnus is the Nekud Panimis, the Nekud of Etzem, which is built in Morgash, which is not felt, but I'm there at that moment. And the Rebbe goes on to describe the fact that the Baal Sulam says that by different tzaddikim you have this Indian that sometimes it's not only that the Meichin are out of control, sometimes it's specifically that way, that a tzaddik will feel Gadla Samaychin when the rest of the world is in Katna Samaychin, and other tzaddikim will feel Katna Samaychin when the rest of the world is in Gadla Samaychin. A person should not be overwhelmed by this All a person has to do is serve HaKadosh Baruch in accordance with their strengths of that moment in the connectivity of that small point. And the Rebbe continues, Even though there are worlds that are associated with the contemplation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name, the Shem Havaya and all of its Miluyim, which is the Av and the Sag and the Ma and the Ban, which represent Moich and the Godless, we have to remember that Yesh Gam Shem Moshel Ekev Adnus Ve'Eloikim Shem Bechinas Elam Shel Moich and the Katnus. There's also other names of Hakadosh Baruch Hu which represent Katnus Moich and the Shem Ekev and the Miluyim of Kasa, Kama and Kanag and Adnus and spelled out in Tara and the Eloikim, which is the aspect of Din. That there's also those names that I have to think about. The Afal Pi Gam Kain Heim Olam. And we have to believe that those are also full holy worlds. Ah, they're moich and dekat mystical worlds. Okay, they're still worlds that are expressed by a Kaddish Baruch Hu. V'gam behem Hashem. And there's also Avedis Hashem in the Katniss as well. Kayadua Hasipur, Kishaya, Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, B'Darach HaEretz Yisrael. Like we know in the Maisa from the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, as he was on his way to Eretz Yisrael, and Rabbi Nachman says that the reason the Baal Shem Tov wasn't Zeichet to come to Eretz Yisrael, and again, we have to recognize that we don't know anything before saying a story like this. Rabbi Nachman says in Chayim Aran that in order to be Zeichet to Eretz Yisrael, a person has to go through the Katniss to Katniss. And the Baal Shem Tov was only able to stand in the Katniss, but not the Katniss to Katniss. 
not the smallness of smallness. And because Rabbi Nachman was able to be masig, katnus to katnus, the smallness of the smallness, mamish the bottom of the barrel, to find spiritual experience there, that's why he was zeichet to the godless of godless, which was Eretz Yisrael. But here we see the Baal Shem Tov also encountering the katnus on the way to Eretz Yisrael. The Tosfos him, and the murderers grabbed him, and that tribe grabbed him, and the Baal Shem Tov was in a state of profound closed-mindedness and small-mindedness, and the 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 tzaddik's Rabbi Achia Shiloini came to him, the Gilalo, and revealed to him, Sha'alov Lavadas Hashem Aide Hashem Akadosh Eke. Now is the time to serve Akadosh Baruch with the name Eke, Aleph K, Yud K, which means Anna Zamin Lemeheve. I am prepared to be. I don't feel it right now. I don't feel it right now, but I'm going to feel it. That's the name of Tshuva that Rabbi Nachman tells us about in Torah Vav. Of Anna Zamin Lemeheve, I'm prepared to be, I'm prepared to wait. Even though I'm not feeling it right now, I'm able to feel it because I know that I'm going to feel it. That's the aspect of Ibor, of a state of impregnation, something that is not present yet, but we believe that it's going to be present. The Katnus, Babachinas Mem Stuma, it's the aspect of Katnus and small mindedness. But nevertheless, nevertheless, there's always going to be a small point there that allows a person to connect themselves to the source of all life. The Rebbe continues, the Yisab Taran and Vav, and it's written in Makutimaran Taran and Vav, Shafilabas that even in the concealment within the concealment it is most certain that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is hidden and concealed there as well and that there's no level that a person cannot find HaKadosh Baruch Hu in it just has to be in accordance with their level and this is all that Shemayim asks of us and it's not okay for a person to wait and say I'm going to wait for a state of open-mindedness and expansivity and Meichen the Godless. And then I'll be able to serve God. Why? The service of God is not dependent on Godless and Meichen. Katnas Meichen is also an opportunity to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The smallness is also from Hashem. And we have to understand and pay attention to what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is asking from me at this moment. In the Godless, in the Katnas. If it's in Godless or if it's in Katnas. And at that point, we can begin to understand perhaps what the Kretschner for Rebbe said to the Rebbe, that who told you there's Meich and the Godless? Who said that there's such a thing that Meich and the Godless means that you don't serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu in that way? A person has to serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu in every matziv. And it's not, it's not a consolation prize. Meich and the Kaddish is Dveikus. It's an existence of Oilamos. There's an Ak and an Abiya of Katnus. There's no sila kamaychen. There's no moment that is devoid of godliness. Uh, so what do we mean when we say it's a moment devoid of godliness? It's godliness that presents itself by way of appearing to be absent. And when I serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu in that moment where it appears to be that he's absent in my mind, memela I'm attacking that darga as well. And this is really the avoida of Lagba Oimer, this is the avoida of the katnas shabakatnas of hoid shabahoid, the lowest level, which at that point it's meskala lahepach, that is specifically there in the lowest place that a person is oicha to find the deepest light. This is the avoida of Pesach Sheni, like the tzaddikim say, like Rafil Parich says, that the, the secret of, of, of Pesach Sheni is the secret of the Balchuva who's above and beyond the Tzaddik, because the Tzaddik can only eat matzah. The Tzaddik can't tolerate chametz and matzah of asachas. But those who tarried, those who were left behind, those who were stuck in a state of Tumas Misa, in a state of Meichen Dekatnus, they have the capacity of revealing the depth of the ability to eat matzah and chametz together to be Megala, that even the Katnus itself, even the Katnus HaMeichen, is part of the Godless HaMeichen. Be'ezrus Hashem.